So I'm at the uh, Double Tree Hilton in Malacca, Malaysia. Um, been to quite a few places in Malaysia now. I've been to Langkawi, um, you know, I've been to obviously KL. KL is huge, it's got so many different districts. Um, you know, you've got Puchong, you've got Selangor. Um, you've got a lot of different things to see just in KL. Um, so maybe I can give you a bit of a breakdown on what to see if you come to Malaysia. Um, so Malaysia's, the most popular places would be, uh, well, I would say JB or Johor Bahru would be the most popular place because it's so close to Singapore uh, that you have a lot of tourism in that area. Um, and so, you know, just like when Americans go to Mexico, uh, the Singaporeans go to Southern Malaysia, uh, which is called Johor Bahru uh, or JB. Um, and so let's see, so that's, that's obviously you know, one, of the, one of the most popular places, obviously KL which has one of the best airports uh, in the whole world uh, is, you know, even better, you know, Singapore has a better reputation, but it's, it's just uh, too expensive. You can't actually buy anything um, in the airport. It's just got a lot of like high-end uh, shopping brands. Whereas with Kuala Lumpur, they've done it in, in a way that makes sense to the average person. Uh, they have a, an overnight hotel in case you have a long layover. Uh, that's not too expensive. It charges by the hour um, up to, I believe, eight hours. Uh, maximum. Uh, they have a grocery store in the airport. KUL is the code. Uh, that's the best part because, you know, that's, uh, you know, sometimes you have a hotel or homestay in the middle of nowhere and it's difficult to find um, food and water and so on. You never know whether the water from the hotel or your accommodation will be a one-time thing when you arrive or something daily. Um, so you've got KL, you've got uh, another place. My favorite place is Langkawi. Um, it's got warm beach water. If you like surfing, you'll probably like it. It's, it's basically a beach and a rainforest um, close by each other. So if you like nature, Langkawi would be number one. Um, so you've got Langkawi, KL, JB. What am I missing here? Um, well, you know, right now I'm in Malacca. And Malacca is supposed to be a world heritage site. I'm not, I'm not impressed with it. Um, you've got a cute building, a condo back there. Um, you have an infinity pool. We can't quite see it though, but it's right, right to, uh, in the middle uh, of the two buildings. Uh, I'm in an infinity pool right now. If you come here, you probably want to stay either at the Hilton uh, or the Doubletree or at the Hatton, H-A-T-T-N hotel, which is next, next door. They're actually sort of a combined like townhouses. Um, uh, the infinity pool is called the infinity pool just because it looks like it's going, um, you know, into infinity. It's because, you know, it has no end. Um, you know, it's cold water here. It's not a big deal for me, but uh, if you're somebody who's on social media a lot, you know, it's a big deal to come in and, you know, get, get your filters and do a whole Instagrammable photo. Um, but as you can see, this is really a city. It's not something that's, you know, close, it's probably not going to be close by to a lot of, um, you know, it really isn't close by to a lot of nature. Even in KL, they've, they've restricted some areas. So if you want to go on a hike, there are options for you in KL. Um, KL has the best museums. Malacca claims to have the most museums, but the only one that's been impressive so far has been the Stamp Museum, which most people don't go to. Uh, the Stamp Museum has a, a, a shop uh, that's, that sells really, really cool stamps, including from all over the world. Um, so that might not be a cup of tea, but I, I thought it was really interesting because you know, what you choose to put on your stamps tells, says a lot about where you are as a country um, and not only that, but it gives you a little bit of a historical perspective because, um, you know, if you have, say, the Olympics or the Asian Games, uh, you're in a position where you can sort of commemorate that uh, along with the people that you admire when you, when you create a stamp. Um, I know I'm missing, I've been to quite a few places and I'm sort of blanking. To me, let's stick with Malacca. Malacca is basically the Cabo. You know, Malacca is to Malaysia what Cabo is to Mexico. Um, in other words, it's a little bit artificial. Not a whole lot to do outside the main area. Um, and, you know, so if you're really sort of a, an intrepid traveler, you want something unique, you probably don't want to go to Cabo. Um, and this is from somebody who likes Puerto Vallarta. Puerto Vallarta um, is much, is, is similar, but it's much less touristy. Um, but if you want, if you're a beginner, if you just want to go someplace nice and have a good time, um, and you don't want to spend a lot of money, like Hawaii is expensive, uh, if you want to stay in a place that's close, that's right on the beach. Um, and so if you don't want to spend a lot of money, there's a lot of options here. There's, well, I'm looking over, there's an Oyo hotel. It looks like nine, OYO 906. It's right there. Looks like it's two blocks from where I am right now. Um, obviously you've got the usual Airbnb and a lot of, a lot of other places. 
Um, so you have options. Uh, so I think the, the main thing that bothers me is a lot of things here are designed specifically around tourism. They're going to develop the beachfront. There's, there is a beach right behind me, but you can see that no one's there. And no one's there because it's not developed. Uh, it will be developed at some point. Um, and right now, I guess they're focusing on, you know, with UNESCO and World Heritage to create, you know, with the museums and give it a bit of culture. But, you know, it's really interesting because culture is not something that you can, you know, <laughs> just sort of inject by fiat. And Malacca, of all places, ought to have an easier time um, with culture because this is where um, uh, Zhang He other, uh, or Cheng Hu or Cheng Ho, also known as Sam Po, depending on where you go, um, he was the, um, the bodyguard and the uh, navigator much better than Vasco da Gama, much better than anybody Europe ever sent. Went all over the world, and one of the reasons that Malaysia and Indonesia are Muslim is because this guy's story is fascinating. He was a um, Muslim eunuch in China, and somehow just became, ended up becoming China's greatest ship navigator. And this is where he showed up most of the time, a lot of the time. The reason for that, from what I can gather, um, is that basically he was sent as a bodyguard to protect a Chinese princess that the Sultan of Malacca had fallen in love with. And so, of course, you know, you have bodyguards, you come all the way from China down here to protect the princess. Um, and some of, you know, it's, it's a huge undertaking back in the day. You have a huge ship, maybe you have two or three. Um, and so a lot of people stayed behind from China, which is why you have Chinese people here in Malaysia and also in Indonesia. Uh, and which is why, in, and it's sort of interesting because you know, this country is still considered under the constitution to be a Muslim country that, was, that under the constitution respects other religions. Um, and so it's really interesting to see the different dynamics here. You've got churches all over the place. Uh, there's in the middle of town in the touristy spot, there's actually a Tamil uh, Methodist church. And the Tamils are usually from Sri Lanka, which used to be called Ceylon. So when you drink Ceylon tea, what you're doing is you're drinking a blend from Sri Lanka. Um, and so a lot of people from Ceylon uh, fled as refugees here um, because, you know, obviously when you start changing names as a country, that tells you there's something going on. Um, and so due to the power, power shifts within Sri Lanka or formerly known as Ceylon, you have a lot of Tamil people here and in Singapore. And in fact, one of the reasons that Singapore became such a power, um, it was such a respected port, uh, and was not only because Stanford Raffles from the UK uh, it was not only because he made it into a free port, he did charge for items that were, he had different things, but he didn't, you know, he didn't charge you to pass. Um, he had something in the form of a tariff, but it was still cheaper than anywhere else. Um, but, you know, you, so you had that, that foresight, but he also had uh, the opportunity to, um, you know, have all these Tamil, the big guys, and Tamils are big people. They're almost black um, in skin color. Uh, and, they, and anytime you see somebody who's six foot two, uh, you know, with black skin who looks Indian, it's actually a Tamil. Um, and those are the ones that built the ships in Singapore. Um, and so, you know, you have a lot of interesting mixtures here. And there is a Cheng, there is a Cheng Ho Museum. I haven't been there yet, so um, I will go today. Uh, but it's still, the city still feels a bit artificial. Uh, so I'm trying to think of, uh, I know I'm leaving, oh, uh, there's, okay, there's this Kuching. Kuching is a really laid back, easy city to explore. Uh, the Hilton down there is a really old building, but it's really convenient. Uh, it has a another hotel that's brand new that's right next to it. If you just pull it up on Google Maps, I believe it's a Pullman, P-U-L-L-M-A-N. If you want to go to Kuching, that's the easiest city to go to because you've got the waterfront, almost all the hotels are nearby. Um, but again, you, you know, just like with Malacca, you probably can't justify staying there more than three nights. Um, with Kuching, the difference here is you can just go out about an hour and you've got a lot of different options in terms of a waterfall, in terms of nature. Um, that's the advantage of Kuching over Malacca. So um, so I happen to like Kuching. If I just want to chill, relax, I would go to Kuching. I've not been to Penang. Penang is another place that sort of, along with Malacca, you know, sort of comprises um, the what we call the Peranakan culture, which is again, Chinese people coming over from China, settling down, marrying the locals, um, and then essentially integrating within the society here. Uh, it's called Peranakan. Uh, so we've covered Kuching, we've covered Malacca, we've covered KL. Um, KL has the best museums. If you want culture, probably want to go to KL. Uh, got Malacca. What am I missing here? 
Um, I also went to another place. I'm completely blanking here. Um, the other place I went to was in the Sarawak uh, region. And that was interesting because again, you know, the oil, by the way, is primarily, I believe it's in, primarily in Sarawak. Uh, so they have a lot of autonomy. I have some waterfalls down there that are really beautiful. Um, and so if you want, again, nature, you've got, your, you've got to be careful where you go because most of the places are about an hour away from the hotels. Uh, tourism hasn't really caught on to the attraction of waterfalls, um, except in Costa Rica, one of the one place that has the foresight, but you're still not going to be able to go there in the next and have a hotel that's within walking distance, which is a good thing because you don't want to have too much development uh, you know, nearby a waterfall. Uh, you typically want to have a, a short hike to get there. Um, so I think I've covered a lot of it here. Uh, so if you're thinking about coming to an easy place, uh, and in fact, almost all the museums are, are within two blocks of a, of a place called Jonker Street. Uh, so that's all, if you want to stay really, really close uh, to all the different museums, just go get a hotel nearby Jonker, J-O-N-K-E-R. So we've covered that. We've got Kuching, Kaol, uh, what else? Kuching, Kaol, Malacca, um, obviously, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm missing one of them, we've covered one of them in Sarawak. Um, so uh, let's see, that's actually Kuching. Um, but there's other cities you want to go to as well. Uh, I haven't been to Penang. Uh, if you want to just go to the beach and just hang out on the beach, a lot of people say go to Penang. Um, that's, that's something you know, that, that you can certainly uh, look into. Um, and that's got a, a nice beach. Uh, but for someone who's been to the Philippines and Mexico, I'm not going to choose a beach in Malaysia unless it's Langkawi. Langkawi is the only beach in all of Southeast Asia except outside of the Philippines that I would go to, specifically if I wanted to see a beach. Um, so that's why Langkawi is number one. It's such a unique place. Um, and so, but again, if you just want to go to a beach and you don't want to pay Langkawi prices uh, to be uh, in a hotel that's on the beach, you can always go to Penang. In fact, there's also a Hilton on, in Penang. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, so Malaysia is, just, is you know, a really popular de destination. The, um, the currency, despite having oil, is still quite weak compared to say the yen or the US dollar uh, or even the Singaporean dollar. Uh, so that's why you have a lot of tourism out here. What I, what I would hope to see in the future in Malaysia uh, is more mixing. Everywhere in Malaysia, you've got, you don't have any mixing. Like even the Indians, you know, you've got the Tamils marrying the Tamils. You, you almost never see like a Hindu. Hindus are normally lighter skinned uh, because of the caste system and the uh, favoritism that the British, um, the British hiring system uh, had in, in India. In the old days, uh, they, uh, it really seems to me that whoever was light-skinned uh, had, had an advantage when it came to political appointments. Um, and so the Tamils are the blue-collar people. Uh, it's kind of interesting how that dynamic, dynamic plays out all over the world uh, after 19, after, you know, in the 1900s um, and before that as well. So that's basically it. So hopefully if you come to you know, Malaysia, hopefully you'll see more mixing uh, because the history here is actually a lot of mixing. Uh, not just, you know, with people from coming from China, um, but all over the world, you know, from obviously from Ceylon. Um, if you really, really, really want to look at the history of the world, the history of the world is uh, war and refugees and, uh, and, the, and the lives that people have made outside the places they've been born. Uh, that really is uh, the best angle to study history. Um, and so the, if you look at it that way, the lack of intermarriage within Malaysia is really disappointing, uh, at least someone like me. So I think that's it. Um, yeah, so uh, hopefully you can come by, have fun. Uh, number one for me is Langkawi, number two is Kaol, um, number three is Kuching, number four, I mean, yeah, if you want something easier, is um, Malacca. And I think that would, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, JB. Sorry, uh, if you want like a really just easy vacation and actually one of the best hotel that I've been to uh, in terms of the food and the uh, high tea would be in JB, uh, which is nearby Singapore. But I'm not sure you just want to go there um, only for uh, the, the food. If you just want to stay in a hotel and just chill, you might want to go to JB, um, and that might be the place you want to go, uh, especially if you're nearby Singapore. Uh, so I would say probably JB would be in the middle somewhere. So that's basically it. Take care.